let's have a go at these. Now, I'm putting this question up on the board in full knowledge that a good number of you, or well, I'm hoping, um, will have gotten to this this morning. So this is question six from this morning's exercise. Can I have a show of hands? Who's at least started on these questions? Hand up straight. And keep your hand up if you finish them as well. Okay, great, hands down. So well done to you guys. Uh, what I would advise you to do, if you had your hand up right at the end there and have done these, um, then you're welcome to continue working through. But when I'm done here, uh, when I stop talking, just look up and have a look at the way I've set things out just to make sure it lines up with the way you've done things as well. Okay. So for the majority of people who have either started on these or haven't even gotten to these yet, let's have a look. Uh, I have a metaphor in my mind for you into which all these questions kind of fit. I think of these questions here kind of like putting together Lego, except you only have two pieces to choose from. And these are your two pieces, okay? From these two pieces, you can build every other thing that you're going to be asked to work with here. And what I like about this, and what I love about Lego, is that you can know these two pieces very well, but it requires some creativity and imagination to get to whatever weird concoction it is that we give you, uh, which you, know, you have to get through some twists and turns before you get to them, okay? So let's have a start just by having a look at this quadratic and working out the sum and the product of the roots based on the coefficients. When we begin, I would advise that the first thing you write down is just the result. That's just to help you remember and so that when you go and do the substitution, you get it right. In this case, what is minus b on a? Come on, have a look at the numbers. Five on two, cool. There's building block number one. And building block number two, the product, again, I'll write that down. That's fine. I'll write this down just so that I can help myself remember the result. In this case, C on A is? Cool. Not complicated, OK? Now, how do I use these things to get to all of these? Well, alpha minus 1, beta minus 1, there's actually two ways to go about this. But the simplest way is just to expand the thing and see how, when you've brought this out, you've got the building blocks just sitting there. Okay, so alpha minus 1, beta minus 1. If you just pair up your terms, it looks like you're going to get alpha, beta, minus alpha, minus beta, plus 1. How's that look? Okay with that expansion? Thumbs up. And so you can see here, it didn't take very much work. Uh, I could do one more thing just to make it super obvious. This is taking out the factor of negative 1. And so you can see, I know what this is. And I know what this is, so I'm just going to do a straight substitution to evaluate this. So alpha beta was a half. Take away 5 on 2 plus 1. What is that? I think a half minus 2 and a half is minus 2. Uh, and then plus 1 is negative 1. Are you happy with that? So <coughs> excuse me. You can evaluate that. I'm not even really worried about it. Um, it's these pieces and the moving them around and seeing where inside the expression the pieces that I'm familiar with are hiding. That's what I'm really interested in. OK, let's have a look at D. Now, alpha to the negative 1 is just a fancy way of writing 1 on alpha. <coughs> Same deal with the beta. So when you have a look at this, again, thankfully, doing the thing that we normally do with fractions, just like the thing that we normally do with terms like this and expand, is going to give us the results. If I put these two fractions on a common denominator, like I do all the time when I'm adding fractions. What is that common denominator? Alpha. alpha beta, OK, which is familiar. And then when you have a look at how these are going to have to be changed, you multiply this one by beta on beta. So that gives you this. You multiply this one by alpha on alpha, which gives you that. OK, and lo and behold, the two results that you already know. So what do we got here? 5 on 2 on 1 on 2. And of course, that's just 5. Okay, So that's not too complicated. Again, uh, if you just sort of combine terms, often the correct use of the pieces just falls out. But then sometimes you get to ones like this. And you're like, oh, there's no obvious thing to do with this. It's kind of as simple as it gets. Um, there's no factorization. So there's kind of a bit of a trick here that requires a bit of creativity to work out. Any suggestions? Yeah. Uh, if you do alpha plus beta, 
Okay, so let's just rewind a second. Shayan's first suggestion was to think about this guy. Now, before we have a think about him, I want you to understand why this makes sense. Because you're being asked to have squares of roots, and these things don't have any squares in them, so something's going to have to be squared. However, when you go ahead and you give this a go, you find this is not what you wanted. Right? That's not what we were asked to create. It's got extra things. What's the extra? Two alpha and beta. But that extra we can get rid of because we know what alpha and beta are. Okay? So the way that I would write this is, back to my top line now, this red stuff was like sort of working on the side. I would write that this is equal to alpha plus beta all squared. Take away that extra stuff because I don't actually want the extra stuff. Like so. Okay, and you can see now I know what pieces go into this. I can simply substitute in. Uh, what did I just say? Five on two all squared. Take away what? Just one. So that's going to be twenty-one on four. Okay. Again, the number is not the important part. The manipulation and the rearrangement are. Now, then you come to this last one. Put your pins down because um, even those of you who said, oh, I did question six, this is fine. Uh, you might notice by the star, this is not in question six, so I'm just going to throw this one at you. This one is different to the others in at least a couple of different ways. Anyone want to suggest, before we get to an answer, how is this one different? What's a way in which this question is different to the previous four we just did? There's no beta. There's no beta. And that's kind of... Um, that's kind of a signal to you that, ooh, this is going to be a little bit different from the others. Okay? There's no beta, so no matter what way you combine these guys, you actually you can never get rid of beta. It's always sort of sticking around there. Okay? So therefore, your alpha plus beta and your alpha beta aren't going to be on their own enough. What else is different about this? Anything else that's weird or unusual? Hmm. Some interesting choices of numbers there. 2 and negative 5. Are those anywhere else on the board that you can see? They're, they're, they're in the original question, aren't they? They're, they're right up here. Now, what this question is about is not so much sum and product of roots, but the roots themselves and whether you understand what it means for something to be a root. So if I think about something like my good old faithful here. Okay, We know what the roots of this equation are. Well, you know what they are. You know what the two numbers are because this is like the 10,000th time I've shown you this equation. Think about what happens with those roots and what makes them roots. For instance, 1 is not a root of this equation. Why not? I like the number 1. Why isn't it a root? Let me, let me maybe phrase the question in reverse. You've got two numbers in your mind, right, that are the roots. What's so special about them that makes them the roots of this equation? Yeah. Because when x equals 1, y doesn't equal 0. OK, so when x equals 1, I would get uh, 1 plus 5 plus 6, which is 12, right? But, but 12's not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be 0. Whereas, well, tell me one of the other roots that you have in your mind, the actual roots. Ne negative 3, negative 3. So that would give you 9 minus 15 plus 6. Aha! So it's a root because it makes this statement true. Do you agree? So if alpha and beta are the roots of this equation, then if, for example, you put alpha into here, what would you get? If you put alpha into this left-hand side, what should you get? You should get 0, just like we did over there. Right? So therefore, I can infer, and this is the way that I would write it, I would say since alpha is a root, what did I just say? Plus 1. Right? Since it's a root, what it means to be a root is it satisfies this equation. Does that make sense? So therefore, 2 alpha squared minus 5 alpha plus 1 is 0. Are you okay? Do you see how this just gets at, well, that's, that's the definition of what a root is, right? So now can you tell me what 2 alpha squared minus 5 alpha is? 2 alpha squared minus 5 alpha. If you want that to be the subject of the equation, what do you do? 
you just subtract one from both sides, wouldn't you? So it's negative one, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So that's a bit sneaky. Um, what my point is here is even though a lot of this is about manipulation, you don't even need to, someone doesn't even know, need to know what alpha and beta are equal, like what they mean in order to do a lot of this. You do need to know what alpha and beta mean in order to really get the heart of what this subject is doing. Okay.